Thank you for listening. I would very much appreciate you sharing this podcast. Please tune in next week as we continue to explore the community. Consider emailing me at marj, M-A-R-J, at marjandre.com. I welcome suggestions for podcast guests. Stay well, stay connected. On this podcast, I'm talking with David West, the mayor of Richmond Hill. He's been on my podcast before. For this podcast, I wanted to talk to him about two conferences he's just attended, both for mayors. Welcome, David. Hi, Marge. How are you today? I am doing well. Really glad that we found time to to have this conversation. So, so David, you were not too long ago in Texas at a Sister Cities event, uh, invited there by two people that you got to know through really your involvement, your attention with the Charter for Compassion. Can you tell us about this event and what was the purpose? Sure. Yeah, it's um. So the Charter of Compassion is something that the uh, city of Richmond Hill signed on to uh, a couple of years ago. And it's basically a commitment um, to for us to be working towards a more compassionate city. And I, I truly do believe that that's an important uh, thing uh, right now in this day and age, particularly with all that's going on in the world. And it's all all that's going on with political discourse and, and hate speech and, and a whole bunch of pressures that are really um causing communities not to be as cohesive as ideally they should be, I think that this uh, initiative is a good one. Uh, so I was invited to, to speak uh, in, in Chicago at a convention actually in August and, and um, you know, and talk about some of the things that Richmond Hill is doing along the lines of cre- creating a more compassionate city. And, and so I got uh, invited to this convention uh, as well. Okay. So you, you gave a talk at this one, like what, what was your talk? What was your what was your message? Well, it was a panel of a number of different mayors. There was uh, one from Lordrina, uh, Brazil. There was one from Monterey, Mexico. Uh, the mayor of San Antonio, Ron Nuremberg, who's a real champion for compassion, uh, and myself. So we had a real representation across the Americas. Um, but the the, the talk that we were asked to give was to give some concrete examples and and reasons for uh, some of the initiatives that we're taking in our cities uh, that are around compassion and are, are making our cities uh, more livable and, and more friendly, more collaborative, uh, more compassionate. Did you get any feedback from your talk? Uh, any good discussions? Yeah, there were. I mean, there was a bunch of just, you know, when you go to a convention like that with a bunch of elected officials from different places, um, you know, there's a real exchange of information about, you know, what's the, what the challenges are in, in mm. their municipalities and what the uh, and what the some of the things that are solutions that you found in your municipality and sharing that. And and I mean, I will also admit when you you get together like that, you're also proudly speaking of the things uh, about your municipality that that you know, you're most proud about and, and that uh, and that make your municipality the, the great place that each of us calls our home. Mm-hmm. OK, good. Uh, so do you sense any differences between Canada and the U.S. or actually other places in the world as well? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, every place is different. <clears throat> I, I think um, the United States right now is having some real challenges in their environment um, politically. And, and I mean, I'm not going to really delve into that because, frankly, I'm not an expert on those types of things. But um, there is definitely um, a heightened, I think, sense of um, of uh, concern in the United States and, and a heightened polarization. But having said that, I mean, those types of things uh, that are causing that division and polarization in in one, that country, U, the U.S. in particular, are happening around the world. I mean, we very much live in a in a global uh, country, or sorry, global world. And you know what happens in one corner of the world in, almost immediately spills out into other places, for better or for worse. And uh, and we're certainly seeing some of the same challenges that that um, American cities. Uh, and and cities in other parts of the world are 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 facing as well. Okay, yeah. 
Well, I hope everybody was nice to each other and uh, you enjoyed. I think people who go to these conferences are the nice people, the cream of the crop. So uh, I'll hope you had a great time there. <laughs> no, it, it was very interesting. And, and I have to say, just on that note, I mean, I was, you know, when, when in preparation for this talk, I mean, I, I did sit down and, you know, obviously have to prepare and, you know, list some things that we're doing. It does really sound notable that, you know, we are doing – uh, a number of initiatives, you know, that would be aligned with creating a more compassionate city. Um, and, and we're doing it very intentionally. But interestingly, when I was putting the list together, we're not doing it specifically to be compassionate. We're just doing it because it's the right thing to do. And it, it's the right thing to create a society where everybody is included and everybody, um, you know, has opportunities uh, to, to live their best life and, and to live in, in you know, the, the, the fortunate comfort that we, uh, you know, so many of us have in this country. Um, we're very fortunate uh, to call Canada home. I, one of the things I, I will say just in general is in, I've been doing a fair amount of traveling around and talking to other mayors in the last little while, and it is absolutely not lost on me how un unbelievably lucky we are uh, in Canada uh, and in Richmond Hill uh, specifically um, to have the, the, the comforts and the, and the amenities and the way of life that we have uh, compared to other places. And, you know, this is something that's incredibly important. And, and I know, you know, we, we often, including myself, uh, take a lot of those things for granted. But, you know, um, when you start to spend some time thinking about what's going on in other places in the world, you know, those things are not as universally um, enjoyed by all of the people that, that live in those places. Right, right. Well, thank you for that reminder of how we uh, are, are fortunate. We should be very grateful. So, uh, okay, let's uh, go back from Texas to Calgary. It's the annual conference for the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM. Uh, it's held, I think, different places, different cities every year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so what is the mandate of FCM? Um, well, so FCM has been around for a long, long time. And um, we have various uh, uh, municipal organizations that that represent us at different levels of government. So the Federation of Canadian Municipalities is the one that represents us at a national level. And so, you know, obviously we're dealing a lot with the federal government at FCM, not the, like we have a, another association called the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Um, and that's an association that deals mostly with the provincial matters and, and it's just Ontario municipalities. Um, so the federal the F FCM conference dealt a lot with with um, issues that that you know concern us and or bind us together uh, as Canadians. So we had all of the federal leaders actually well I, the the uh, progressive conservative leader sent uh, his representative Scott Aitchison, uh to speak. But the you know Jagmeet Singh was there, Prime Minister uh, Trudeau was there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an opportunity for delegates uh, to ask questions and 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 give input and, and so on. But, you know, there were a number of themes um, that I, again, found interesting that are common across Canada um, that we really need. And probably the biggest one this year, and, and it's been bubbling under in other years too, is the, the needs and the lobbying that FCM has, is, has done and will be doing in the future uh, at the federal level to get the federal government to work with us to come up with a better financial uh, framework for cities. And what that translates to mean is that, you know, we do a lot of work in cities on the types of issues that really are not, should not be funded through the property tax base. They should be funded on a more national level through uh, funding from the federal government. And so there's been a, there was a big call this year, more so than usual, for a new financial framework to be worked out with the federal government and frankly, and the provincial government. Um, you know, people live in cities. That's primarily where people live in, in Canada. And, you know, we don't have the resources and we don't have the funding that's commensurate with the responsibilities that we uh, are shouldering at a municipal. Uh, it's really important. And I, I really do believe that it's important for the future of Canada. Strong cities will make a strong Canada.
Woo. Okay. That's um, quite impressive what was happening. I didn't realize the depth of uh, what you talk about. And uh, yeah, like how many people were there? Because uh, it's more than mirrors. It's also other counselors and, and staff as well. Yeah. yeah, there were. There were there were a whole bunch of different people, but we had over 3,100 uh, delegates, which was a record uh, mm -hmm. for FCM. And, um, you know, I think this really, you know, post pandemic, you know, people are starting to get back into their regular lives and um, and go. I, I just I should tell you on that note, it, it was actually quite ironic and interesting that we arrived in Calgary, I guess, on the Thursday. Uh, and, uh, you know, upon touching down, you know, you turn your your phone back on from airplane mode and news started flashing up across our phones about this uh, state of emergency that Calgary had found itself in that uh, one of the main feeder lines for its water treatment plant had burst and created quite a lot of flooding. And as a result of that, um, there was only a limited amount of water left in the system uh, that would be able to be used by Calgarians over the course of the next little while. And they're still facing this problem. But it, you know, it, the irony was not lost on me that, you know, we're talking about aging infrastructure in cities like this very old water main and 3,100 people who are acutely aware of aging infrastructure landed in Calgary. And I know that May Mayor Gondak, uh, a couple of times throughout her very, very, very busy schedule, I mean, she it was very generous of her to be able, even able to come to the convention at all, given what she was going through. At one point, she said, you know, it was really helpful for her to have 3,100 uh, people that would understand what she's going through, you know, coming out for uh, into her city for that period of time. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was it couldn't have been a more poignant uh, moment, I think, in FCM's history. Is Calgary OK now? Is it they got the water? Back? Well, I think they're working through it. But, okay. um, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I understand I'm not an expert on water distribution systems, but, you know, that the water distribution system in a lot of the, the cities like Calgary, uh, Toronto, for sure, mm -hmm. uh, that those pipes and everything. And we don't think about them because no. they're underground. They're, they're not there until they break. And then all of a sudden you notice them. But, uh, you know, every time we turn the water on, on our tap, we can be relied in, in most parts of Canada, not all, uh, that good, clean drinking water is going to come out of there. It's not going to make you sick. And when you flush the toilet, it goes away. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's treated responsibly before it's, the water's put back into the environment. So um, even though that infrastructure is not there in front of our eyes all the time, uh, it's under the ground, it's aging, and it's going to need to be replaced at some point, And it's going to cost a lot of money to collectively replace that type of thing. Yeah, very, very good. Okay. I expect that as well as these sort of things, there's some practical knowledge you, you gained. Uh, it's really sort of good to t be able to talk to other mayors. Uh, you know, if you're a teacher, you can walk down to the staff room and talk to teachers. You're a dentist. There's lots of dentists in Richmond Hill, but there's only one mayor. So, yeah, you know, do you? Is there a real value in talking to other mayors? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, nothing is new in this in in the business of running municipalities. I mean, new ideas come up, but. But, you know, the, the general principles of what we do are, are not new. And, and I, I think, you know, there are cities that are experiencing more or less success in a given area. And, you know, sharing those ideas means that the adoption of better practices, better ways of doing things uh, can be can happen much quicker. I mean, we're not reinventing the wheel every time we run into a problem. Uh, I've spent a lot of time um, in my tenure as mayor so far uh, networking and talking to other mayors and other municipal councillors. Um, and I've encouraged all of our uh, staff to do the same. Uh, you know, it's really important that we all work together because while there's a lot uh, across Canada, especially that makes us different and unique, there, you know, the fundamentals of um, what people need to live in a vibrant city are, are actually the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought you'd also like just to commiserate about being a mayor and have someone <laughs> understand how you feel. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that, that came up specifically at the FCM convention that we spent a lot of time talking about, and I think this was a very productive conversation, was uh, the whole idea of uh, harassment uh, of uh, elected officials. And this is becoming uh, a shockingly 
uh, much of a problem. And, you know, we listened in the, in the uh, session where we, we debated a couple of resolutions uh, that will become policy positions on harassment of elected officials about, you know, elected officials generally um, taking a great deal of vitriol from the, the public um, and in a way that isn't productive to, to you know, moving the, the ball forward with regard to better public policy. Um, you know, very personal attacks. Uh, we shockingly heard a number of, uh, more than I thought I would hear, accounts of people having death threats, uh, having their family threatened, uh, having to have security at their home. Um, you know, things that a few years ago would have just, no way that would have happened. And now it's happening. And, and you know, previously we talked about, you know, well, what's happening south of the border? Well, it's happening here. And, um, and one of the things that came up and was relatively hotly debated was the importance to recognize that there are certain groups of people on, that are councillors and mayors that are, are dealing with this in a heightened sense. You know, women are a good example of, of um, the number of threats and the number of challenges that women have in elected office is significant. And, uh, you know, and people that are racialized, Indigenous people, people with disabilities, uh, LGBTQ2SA uh, people. I mean, there, the list goes on. And I mean, we all are dealing um, with this type of harassment. However, um, there are groups um, that, are, you know, are participating in our democracy that are, are having far greater challenges than some of us. Mm-hmm. Okay. We need a bit more compassion, but you know, that's uh, disturbing to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything about Richmond Hill that uh, you were sort of bragging about? Anything that you sort of, uh, you know, is there something unique about Richmond Hill when you compare it to other cities? Yeah, I mean, there really is. Um, you know, I, I mean, I don't know where I'd even be able to start with that because, uh, you know, I've always been very, very, very proud of Richmond Hill. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I talk I've, I talk a lot about um, the environmental accomplishments that we have in Richmond Hill and how really fortunate we are to have uh, such a large amount of protected land in Richmond Hill. Uh, and, and we've been very blessed by Mother Nature to give us the Oak Ridges Moraine. And I've said countless times uh, how important it is for us. I, I believe we have more than an obligation to the public, but we also have a moral obligation to protect that land in perpetuity. Um, that land produces the headwaters of rivers that flow into Lake Ontario and that we use for our drinking water. So, you know, we need to be good environmental stewards across the board. Um, I talk about um, our diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy, and we're not the only ones doing that for sure. Um, but I think, you know, I'm proud of the work that we're doing on that. Um, you know, and, and you know, the challenges that we all face right now, one of the biggest ones is is providing enough homes for people in many different income ranges. Um, it's not to say that we've solved that problem. We have not. Um, but we are actively working on that and, and making sure that we are, um, you know, we're moving forward. I mean, specifically, I, you know, I like to kind of uh, uh, highlight the, the Dunlop Observatory. It's a, a park that is unique within, you know, Canada, if not most of the world. Um, our Richmond Hill Center for the Performing Arts is, is the epicenter of arts and culture in our community. Um, you know, and the and the parks and the trails and you know that we have in Richmond Hill. And I mean it's all the way from the truly spectacular parks like Lake Wilcox Park down to some really great, unique um walking trails and, and parkettes that we have. And uh, you know, we will be adding more and more amenities in those places as time goes on. But um you know, everybody has their favorite places in their community, and and uh, those are some of mine. Right. Okay. I think you know I have my favorite spot there in the Grist Mill Park, and that's you yep. know the idea that I can walk to it, and I have my my special place. I think is uh, people all over the world say, "Where are you?" I no, just it's it's yep. just part of Richmond Hill. So thank you for absolutely for saying yeah. that. So we talked about all great things. Anything that uh, you know, you sort of would like to improve, like you see some things we need to work on as a city. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, as I touched on this a minute ago, I, you know, homelessness and, and housing affordability is are two of the things that are taking an enormous amount of time 
uh, you know, and, and it's, it's productive time because we need to fix this. I'm actually at the region of York today and, and the region of York also has a, a part to play in, in eliminating homelessness. And it's, you know, it's not just like eliminating homelessness in one municipality out of the nine in York region isn't going to solve the problem. We need to look at this from a much wider geographic area. Um, so, you know, we're working on that. Um, some of the, you know, some of the other things uh, we kind of touched on earlier, I mean, there are things like, um, you know, the discourse that we have in Richmond Hill and, and you know, with the, the public and elected officials and make sure that we keep that discourse productive and, and, and civil and, and uh, you know, and, and helpful. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, you know, I think there, as cities grow uh, and we're seeing that not just in Richmond Hill. I mean, challenges come up, there's no question. But I guess the thing that I always try to remember um, when the challenges tend to pile up a little bit is that, you know, with the, the growth of cities like Richmond Hill, there's also enormous opportunities to create new things and revitalized things and amenities in the city that aren't there now, but will be there in the future once this growth happens. And uh, yeah, I find that very exciting. I mean, we've got the subway coming up. I mean, boy, oh boy, it's taking a long time to get here, but uh, you know, it, it is moving forward. And, um, you know, we're planning for that and have been planning for that for quite some time. And, and that will be a, a game changer for Richmond Hill. I mean, we we have some exciting development that will come with the subway and we just need to make it's the make sure that it's the right size. We need to make sure it's in the right place and we need to make sure that it has a mix of amenities other than just uh, residential uh, that can provide for you know, jobs for people in, in maybe office development, uh, commercial development. And also, you know, I think we have a shortage in Richmond Hill of um, places to, you know, go out and have a coffee, go out and sit on a patio and have a, a lunch, you know, and, and all of those places are in the plans. And, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping to get those as time goes on. Okay, very good. So when you were walking around these conferences with your lanyard that says Richmond Hill, people are, hmm, lucky guy you are. So, <laughs> Yeah, well, and not only that, I always make sure. Actually, I don't even have my pin on today, but I, I, I do have a, a pin that I yeah. proudly wear wherever I go to. Okay, so you can be proud to be uh, the mayor of Richmond Hill. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add? No, I mean, I, I appreciate this, the, you know, the opportunity to talk to you, Marge, always. I, I think it's uh, the work that you do in, in connecting people and bringing people together is uh, somewhat legendary in this town or this city. And, uh, you know, there's uh, lots of people that uh, know people because of the work that you do. And, uh, and I, I think that's, you know, an important part. You know, it's, it's a foundational piece in, in cities is that people get to know each other. And, you know, on that note, I was quite proud recently that we uh, passed a new strategic plan. And one of the, the kind of um, summarizing lines in our strategic plan is the vision. And the vision is that we will be a vibrant uh, community of neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I think that encapsulates the way I see Richmond Hill and have seen Richmond Hill for a very, very long time. I mean, we're a big municipality. We have over 220,000 people at the moment and are set to grow bigger than that, obviously, in the next little while. But, you know, we still need to maintain um, as much as possible that uh, sense of community yeah. and the connection that people have with the place that they live. I mean, Richmond Hill, for me, uh, for uh, most of my life, has been more than just a place that I geographically live. It is also a place that I call home. I mean, my wife uh, has lived here her entire life. I guess my son has lived here his entire life. And um, I know that the connections that they have um, with our community are are very significant. And, uh, you know, we, we need to uh, really foster those types of connections. Okay, very good. You know, I, I do end the podcast with asking the same per question to everybody. But this has been really the theme of this whole talk. But I'm going to ask you right now, just what's top of mind? Just one thing you really like about this community, maybe today. Well, there's a lot and then I've covered a lot of them, but <laughs> yes. I, I just, I guess I'll, I'll reiterate. I, I really do like the, uh, uh, the, the, the number of places in Richmond Hill that you can go, like you referenced earlier for a walk, for a park, 
uh, you know, we can we can be, you know, passing by green spaces on, you know, as I came up to the region of York here in Newmarket today, I mean, we pass through Oak Ridges and there's tons of spaces on the Oak Ridges moraine that are, are not developed and, and will stay that way, uh, you know, certainly under my watch and hopefully forever. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, we are really lucky in Richmond Hill to live in a community that um, we are building uh, up and building out, uh, you know, a uh, building a city. But I think at the end of the day, as as the late mayor Dave Barrow said, you know, we're building a city inside of a town, and you know that'll be exciting. There'll be lots of opportunities in the city part, but the, the parts that people love the most, we're going to try to preserve the character and and the physical layout of a lot of those um, places as much as we possibly can uh, as we move into the future. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to put you down as walk, walks in the park are one of the best things in <laughs> that, Richmond. That, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so thank you, David, for taking the time to do this podcast, and I hope we see you around town soon. Thanks, Marge. Thank you, thank you for listening. I would very much appreciate you sharing this podcast. Please tune in next week as we continue to explore the community. Consider emailing me at marj, M-A-R-J, at marjandre.com. I welcome suggestions for podcast guests. Stay well, stay connected.